The Cambridge Audio Evo 150 is a network player, analog and digital preamp and power amp. It supports all kinds of streaming services and protocols, but it also has a phono input. In short, it does more than many need and it's a looker. Let's see how it will fit into your stereo, which in this case is rather simple. The Evo is to be connected to a pair of loudspeakers and your home network. A computer might be connected to your router and if it contains music on a shared volume, you can play music from there too. Alternatively, you can connect a computer or laptop over USB 2 directly to the Evo. Given the many inputs available, you can connect for instance a CD player over SPDIF, TOSLINK or ANALOG and a TV over HDMI ARC or TOSLINK. The same goes for a game console, DVD player or Blu-ray player where audio is concerned. It is best to use a smartphone or tablet as a remote control, although a well designed infrared remote control is included. That is all you need to play internet radio, Spotify, Cobus, Tidal, DNLA, Apple AirPlay, Chromecast, Bluetooth APTX and Rune. It also does MQA decoding and rendering. I normally don't comment on the design of a device on the test, but this time I must say that the Evo is very much to my taste. The large display and ditto volume knob and the Cambridge Audio logo on an aluminium strip on the top give a rich feel to it. Two types of side panels are supplied, walnut and black with a structure. They are held in place by magnets and thus are easy to exchange. The cabinet is of modest size, measuring 317 by 352 by 89 mm. It weighs 5 kilos. The 7 inch color LCD display takes a large part of the front. It has three modes to show what's playing. This is the one I like most. The large font makes it readable up to a distance of 2.5 meters or 8 feet. It shows the source, Rune in this case, sampling rate, bit depth and MQA mode next to cover art, track name, album name and artist. To the right of this display a strip with illuminated icons that indicate the function of the buttons to the right of it. From the top to the bottom play pause, skip forward, skip back, info to select the display mode, speaker switch to select speaker set A or B or headphones and standby. In between the latter two symbols the infrared sensor is situated. The silver ring behind the black knob lets you select the input mode and the black knob itself lets you set the playback volume. Further to the right the 3.5 mm headphone jack. The back is rather crowded. On the right the left speaker terminals for pair A and the same for pair B. Then the preamp output, the subwoofer output, the phono input for moving magnet cartridges plus ground terminal, the aux input and the XLR inputs. Then the digital inputs, two times TOSLINK and one SPDIF. Like for the left channel, the right channel also has terminals for pair B and pair A. The power cable is to be connected to the IEC mains inlet. The top row of connectors start with one that is intended to be used with the EVO CD player, although an EVO CD player is not yet introduced. The TV can be connected over either earlier mentioned TOSLINK or over this HDMI ARC input provided your TV supports ARC, audio return channel. All modern TVs do. A computer Tablet or smartphone can be connected over the USB B socket. It can be set to USB audio class 1 or 2 in software, while the ground switch has three positions to avoid grounding problems. The USB A connector next to it is for connecting a storage medium holding music. The network is connected here, while other equipment like an extra power amp or CD player can be switched on using the trigger output. The trigger input can double as an input for an infrared receiver when the EVO has no direct line of sight to the infrared remote. The RS232 serial bus allows for high end remote controls as used by custom installers. 
The inside is rather crowded, with below this warning label the Meanwell 5 volts 4 amps switch mode power supply that powers the entire EVO with the exception of the power amp. All digital electronics can be found on this board that carries the Cambridge Audio Stream Magic streaming module piggyback style. The Stream Magic unit can be found in other Cambridge Audio devices with streaming functions, so it is trialled and tested. It is connected to the two antennas on the right side. Bluetooth is handled by this module and the antenna is mounted outside the frame and shielded off. The HDMI module is on a small separate board. The analog audio is hidden below the digital board. I had to leave that for what it is since it would take quite some dismantling to get to it. I can tell you that it holds the ES9018 K2M DAC chip. The power amp is the NC252MP Encore by Hypex. It is a unit that includes both switch mode power supply and class D amplification and delivers 150 watts in 8 ohms and 250 watts in 4 ohms per channel. Although the primary functions can be controlled from the front and the infrared remote, the best way to control it is using a smartphone or tablet using the Stream Magic app. I use the iPad Pro. Directly after the EVO app is started, the EVO 150 was found and I was invited to step through an update and some initial settings. Like naming your EVO in, for instance, living room, choosing the standby mode and accepting Google's privacy terms for Chromecast and then setting up Chromecast if you like. You can select the inputs you intend to use to avoid long lists of unused inputs on the input screen. Per input you can set the gain to equal levels between sources and change the name. When all settings are done you can for instance play music from your computer or NAS using DNLA. Let's for instance look for Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. If you are subscribed to Tidal you can log in and look for Bob Dylan. The Rune user can select the EVO as Rune endpoint. When you select the Rune RAT input, the Rune app is automatically started up. Internet radio is no problem either. The app searches for local and national stations automatically, hence the Dutch stations here, but you can search for stations outside your region as well. I could easily find BBC from the UK, WDR from Germany, RAI from Italy, New York Radio FM from the USA or J-Pop Powerplay from Japan. When a source is chosen the EVO automatically selects the relevant input. So when an internet radio station is selected the internet radio input is made active. This also goes if you use Rune and select the EVO as endpoint. Rune lets you set the volume as well and the EVO remote lets you start, stop and skip tracks. If your TV has the audio return channel feature and CSC on your TV is switched on, the HDMI input is automatically chosen when you switch on the TV while you can use the TV remote to change the volume of the EVO. All in all the EVO is not only very versatile but also very easy to use. I evaluated the EVO in my setup too first. It was connected to a pair of Acoustic Energy Radiance 1 loudspeakers over Kimber 4 PR cable. The RHEL T5 subwoofer was connected using RHEL's own cable. I did not use the sub out on the EVO but rather used the RHEL advice connection to the loudspeaker terminals. I used a normal CAT6 patch cable to the AccuFox AccuSwitch SE. The music came from a Samsung T7 SSD USB drive, the DNA server on a Synology DS119J NAS and from RuneRock on an Intel NUC 10i7 FNH. Cambridge Audio is known for its quality reconstruction filter in for instance the Azure series. Here I expect the MQA filtering play a role even when no MQA music is played. I have seen or rather heard the same sound character with the MyTech DAX. The D2A conversion sounds different and even better than I remember from older CD players in the Azure series. 
but that could just as well be due to better insights and components available to designers nowadays. For the Evo sounds impressively clean and yet musical. This is helped by the quality of the Encore power amps. Like all Class D amps they offer powerful and very well controlled lows, but unlike early Class D amps they now also sound great in mids and highs. Compared to my Marantz KI Pearl Lite with the Allo USB signature, powered by the Allo Shanti that drives the Denafrips Ares 2 DA converter, the Allo was more upfront, slightly more open, more powerful bass, equal resolution and stereo image. The Marantz was somewhat more relaxed, the Evo was more on top of things, all in all I could not declare a winner. It depends on the music playing if I preferred the one over the other. I couldn't resist placing the Evo in my setup one. The Audiophysics Scorpios were connected to the loudspeaker terminals over Kimber 4PR cable. The network connection was made over CAT6 patch cable to the SOTM SNH10G network switch and over the network to the Rune Rock server. Again I used both the EVO app and Rune. It was impressive how well the lows were controlled while the Scorpius used 4 woofers per speaker. It did not deliver the quality of the MyTech Brooklyn DAC with Ferrum Hitchfors power supply of course, for that combination cost more than the EVO without having a streamer or amp. But it was remarkable how well the EVO sounded. There were no bad behaviours like coloration of the midrange, something early class D suffered from, or two digital problems like poor lows and stereo imaging or sibilance control. Soundwise it is a very balanced design that I scale in at the top of setup 2. What's not to like? It's enormously versatile but inputs not used can be hidden to make it easy for everyone to operate it. Actually it's even easier since you don't have to select the inputs for all major functions like TV sound, Spotify, Kubus or Tidal. Input switching is usually automatic. The aesthetic commission can't really complain either, for it's a looker. And if it needs to be placed out of sight it can be operated from the smartphone or tablet over the network. In fact, that is the best way to control the Evo. And it sounds right. The Encore power amplifier allows for less efficient loudspeakers like is often the case with quality bookshelf speakers. At 2499 euros it's a lot of quality and a lot of design and a lot of versatility. For those that need less inputs and can live with 75 watts per channel there is the Evo 75. It looks the same but has no phono input, no XLR input, only one instead of two Toslink inputs and no USB-B for connecting it to the computer directly. It also lacks the loudspeaker B output, but it functions almost the same and costs 500 euros less. Which brings us to the end of this video. As usual there will be a new video up next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media, it is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.